I'm Michael Douglas, and welcome to this edition of Dr. Pundit, and I'm ready to take a vacation. Welcome to Dr. Pundit. I'm sitting in my reviewer's chair, I guess, ready to review another album, and another album from the 1980s. The oft maligned and probably forgotten album from the Go-Go's. The second album, of course, they capitalized off the success from their very first breakthrough album from 1981, Beauty and the Beat. Their second album, Vacation, is what I'll be talking about today. And some critics seem to gloss over that album and go right to 1984's talk show, which I think is certainly a superior album, but we can't forget about Vacation. I am Michael Douglas, and if you like what you see here, please don't hesitate to like and subscribe as we get ready to do another album review right here on the channel. Vacation by the Go-Go's. The Go-Go's are renowned for their upbeat, infectious sound, and Vacation, their second studio album released in 1982, exemplifies the band's ability to deliver catchy, pop-infused tunes with an edge. Now, it just clocks in at over 30 minutes, so it's not a long album. Typical for a lot of pop albums, even at that time. The album is a compact burst of energy that solidifies the band's status as trailblazers in the new wave and pop punk arena of the early 1980s. The title track, Vacation, which hit number eight on the Billboard Hot 100, sets the tone for the entire album. And I agree with that. It has a very pulsating rhythm, bright guitar riffs, and Belinda Carlisle's of course, very instantaneously distinctive vocals capture escapism. It's an anthem for escapism, and it captures the essence of carefree summer days, perfect for the year in which it was released. The infectious choruses are vibrant, and the album is, I think, classic in that way. Perfect for blasting from car radios, beachside boomboxes. How many people have boomboxes nowadays? So perfect for 1982. Now, I figure that one of the strengths of the album Vacation lies in its diversity. The album seamlessly weaves between power pop, punk, new wave, and it showcases the band's versatility. Tracks like He's So Strange and I Think It's Me, both good tracks, infuse a pop punk attitude into the mix, and they reveal the Go-Go's ability to balance pop sensibilities with edgier tunes. Now let's talk about the album's rhythm section. And the core personnel of the band were very crucial here. So Kathy Valentine, Gina Schock, Charlotte Caffey, you know, the guitarists, the keyboardists, the drummers, all of their work adds a layer of dynamism which complements Belinda Carlisle's and backup vocals by Jane Weedland, who put out an album in 1988-89 called Fur, uh, and had her own kind of solo career briefly for a hot minute in the, in the late 1980s. So a lot of all of this kind of came together on tracks like Beat Nick Beach, which was a B-side in the album and could have been released as a single. I guess my point is, is that all of these band members worked together to really put out that music from the album that I think made it stand out. And of course, lyrically, the songs on vacation explore themes of predictably love, relationships, the desire for freedom, songs like This Old Feeling, Get Up and Go. They delve into the complexities of romance. And while the rebellious spirit of tracks like Speeding captures the thrill of breaking free from social and societal constraints, whatever that means. And maybe it was a the band yearning to just branch out with this style from that album. And despite Vacation's seemingly carefree exterior, it's not without its moments of introspection. Girl of a Hundred List stands out as a, you know, a, a poignant type of reflection on fame and self-discovery. It's another favorite of mine. It's got a great title. And the introspective lyrics of that song combined with a slower tempo showcase the band's ability to convey a certain depth and vulnerability. The album was produced by Rob Freeman and Richard Goderer, and it enhances the album's lively and unpolished feel, and the raw energy of these performances is somewhat preserved, giving Vacation a certain authenticity that sets it apart. Maybe I'm being a little bit generous here, but, you know, 
I really want people to listen to this album on their streaming services and kind of come to their conclusions about it. And while Vacation may not have achieved the same commercial success as their debut album, Beauty and the Beat, it remains a personal favorite of mine. I might not listen to it all the time, but I do still listen to it. It remains a representative part of the band's discography. And I think its impact extends beyond the year it was released in 1982. And I hope it influences people who like lighthearted power pop punk. So Vacation is the Go-Go's testament to a band's ability to take somewhat of a right turn and take chances. Yes, it yielded a single top 10 hit, but it's much more than that. It's much more than the title track. And I think if you listen to it, find it on any one of the streaming services, I think you'll like it. Strong performances, relatable lyrics, clocking in at 30 minutes, it's short and sweet. Vacation. Now, let's take a look at some of these key tracks in detail. So, of course, we start off with the track Vacation. It's the title track, a top 10 hit, the catchy chorus, vibrant instrumentation, Belinda Carlisle's distinctive vocals. It's a quintessential summer anthem, Vacation. Another track, He's So Strange. Now, this track injects a punk edge into the album with its up-tempo, infectious energy. It has a rebellious attitude. That dynamic interplay between the guitars and the vocal makes it a standout track on the album, Vacation. Girl of a Hundred Lists. This song offers more introspective and contemplative sides to the Go-Go's. Again, it's got a memorable title. And I think if you listen to those lyrics, it's got a slower tempo. It sort of stands out as a kind of a poignant track about fame and self-discovery. Get Up and Go is a lively, energetic track. Upbeat, just like the title track, Vacation. It embodies the carefree spirit of the album. Very likable. It's got a driving rhythm, infectious melody. It makes it a classic example of the Go-Go's power punk prowess. How's that for an alliteration? And finally, Beatnik Beach. It's a B-side on the album. Should have been an A-side. Title is really cool. It showcases the band's harmonious blend of, again, guitar work by Charlotte Gaffey and Jade Weenland's uh, backing vocals. It's upbeat, it's fun, and it's a song that captures the essence of the day uh, and the essence of the go-go sound. And I really think that these, all of these tracks add to an album that you should really listen to. It's somewhat cheesy, but it makes it irresistible. And I, I think that if you do listen to it, I think you'll like it. And I think the album kind of completes that early 80s triumvirate that makes up the band's core catalog. So Beauty and the Beat, 1981, Vacation 1982, and Talk Show, 83, 84. All great albums, but, but uh, I think Vacation really deserves an honorable mention. And I think you should listen to it. If you like what you see here, please subscribe and like to the channel. Another album review from the 1980s. I'm Michael Douglas. And as the late, great Barry White used to say, let the music play. And I'll see you next time right here on Dr. Pundit.